Today we're here to talk about none other than Justice Brett Kavanaugh and what we can all learn from the absolutely atrocious confirmation process that this man was unfortunately subjected to by the leftists occupying both Washington and the media now. Oh, young John Doyle, young naive John Doyle, how you thought you'd only have to cover the story once, but here you are, almost a year later, still covering the story because the left never stops. <laughs> John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. Little uh, little throwback there for the true fans. Also, go follow me on Twitter because I'm doing a giveaway soon. Not going to want to miss out on that. But anyways, that was actually the first video I put up. And I remember thinking to myself at the time, oh boy, oh golly, what a great big story to cover for my first video. I better hurry up before they move on. And yet here we are a year later. We've got more attempts to keep Kavanaugh off the Supreme Court because it just never stops. So uh, the story here is reported by the New York Times. These two women who, by the way, are currently writing a book entitled The Education of Brett Kavanaugh, an Investigation because evidently they have nothing else better to do. And I also really like how it's a cumulative effort, right? Like it requires all of both their brain power to write an anti-Kavanaugh book intended to resurface the Kavanaugh frat boy rapist image because there's still cheese that he's on the Supreme Court. And perhaps that's the motivation for this, right? Like they're convinced they're going to do well in 2020. They want to introduce the idea of removing Kavanaugh from the court into the conversation. Now, wait a minute, John, that's not why they're doing it. You're jumping to conclusions it's like, okay, sorry, my bad. Oh, what's that? An article from Vice published literally six hours ago about how to remove him from the court. Okay, that's interesting. Whatever. Uh, but anyways, these two women published a piece in the New York Times entitled Brett Kavanaugh fit in with the privileged kids. She did not. And the first thing to notice about this is, of course, the headline, more specifically, the story that they're trying to tell through this headline because they're capitalizing on this paranoia that these liberals have about privilege. And if you want to get in deeper with it, the idea of just fitting in as well. And so despite that more women are attending college than men, despite that women are receiving the majority of graduate degrees, despite that women are groomed to pursue higher education more so than men, it's this pernicious narrative of, since you're a girl, you're always going to have to work a bit harder. They're not going to think you belong at the big prestigious school because you're a girl. That's all complete BS. But this woman's name is Deborah Ramirez, and according to the article, she attended a dorm party in the winter of her freshman year at Yale, during which Brett Kavanaugh pulled down his pants and thrusted his nether regions towards her, prompting her to swat at him and inadvertently touch him in the process. Then the article goes on to bring up Christine Blasey Ford's accusations. It brings up an anecdote that apparently Brett Kavanaugh's friends pushed his penis into a girl's hand at a party. And then I kid you not, right now, we're about one third of the way through the article. Then the rest of it just talks about how much more privileged Kavanaugh's upbringing was than this Ramirez woman. It talks about discrimination against women and minorities, and because of that, it was harder for her to fit in places. All this nonsense that has virtually nothing to do with the accusations. But of course, that's not the point. The point is to paint this picture, this intersectional picture of the haves versus the have-nots, the classic Marxist strategy, right? But then you've also now got the conflict between the tyrannical and oppressive man and the victimized and oppressed woman. That's the whole purpose of this narrative. And of course it's false. Of course it's all total BS, but that doesn't matter because once it's out there, once it's in the mind of the public, in the mind of the low information voter, it doesn't matter. The retraction is never covered. In the New York Times, they were forced to add a piece of information to the story of theirs, a piece of information that you know, arguably pretty important to the integrity of the piece, which is that the female student who is allegedly the victim declined to be interviewed and has no memory of the incident. Zero does not exist. And that's regarding the anecdote that they decided to just casually include as if it were factual while neglecting to provide a bit more context for the reader. And regarding the allegations pertaining to the Ramirez woman, the Senate Judiciary staff immediately reached out to her legal team, but despite seven attempts by staff, her lawyers refused to provide documentary evidence referenced in the article and witness accounts to support the claims. They also declined invitations for Ms. Ramirez to speak with committee investigators or to provide a written statement. Nonetheless, the investigators spoke to and reviewed material from several Yale classmates of Ms. Ramirez and Justice Kavanaugh in order to assess the claim. There's even a 414-page investigative summary that you can thumb through if you're so inclined. The committee's review found no verifiable evidence to support the claims. And the New York Times' own reporting at the time noted that it couldn't find anyone with first-hand knowledge and that Ms. Ramirez told friends she couldn't be sure Kavanaugh was involved. Hmm, fancy that. Ultimately, Ms. Ramirez's team agreed to only contact the FBI with the claims. She was reportedly then interviewed by the FBI during its supplemental background investigation. And I guess that's basically it. But remember, all that matters is that they ruined Brett Kavanaugh's life. And this was their bombshell story. Like, really? That's your bombshell? The worst you could do is, okay, there was a dorm party and Brett Kavanaugh's friends put Brett Kavanaugh's penis in a girl's hand. Ignoring the logistics of that, like the practicality of the action, 
right? Like how exactly does one go about putting, you know, it's that's Ben Shapiro's job, whatever, he'll analyze it. But even if we assume that the story is 100% true, I'm not entirely convinced that that's a bombshell. Even the Christine Blasey Ford story was worse than this by a substantial factor. But then of course, that all fell apart. Now we're finding out that they were pressuring people to go along with the story that was politically motivated in the first place. Her close friend doesn't even believe her, yeah. Big headline there. Woman who supports killing babies has no moral conundrum in baselessly accusing man of sexual assault 35 years later when he's about to reach the peak of his career, which could potentially stop women who also support killing babies from killing babies. Yeah, big freaking shocker there. You know, we, we, we could not have anticipated that one. But it's interesting because not only is the Ramirez story not as alarming, it's not even as credible. You know, granted, they like to throw around the word credible. Oh, he's, he's been credibly accused. Okay, well, how do you know? Well, a woman's voice should have value and power. Yeah, this woman's crocodile tear voice dominated the news for like three months. That's pretty powerful. Remember, because it's not quite a normal tone, but it's not quite crying either. It's just, my name is Christine Blasey Ford, and Brett Kavanaugh kept asking me to be his Roblox girlfriend, even though I explained to him that my computer couldn't run it. And that's really what this whole thing is about. My voice and my words speaking truth. This whole anti-Kavanaugh narrative is one big leftist move to capitalize on the emotions of women and of feminine men who think being a feminist will get them late. Did you know that? Did you know that there is no such thing as an honest male feminist? I'm not even kidding. I can back that up scientifically. But one at a time, we will address that in the future. Um, seriously though, this whole thing has been engineered to utilize Kavanaugh's alleged history with women to contort the narrative into, you don't believe Dr. Ford? Women's voices need to be heard. You don't respect women. Meh, meh, women's rights. Hey, John, you got a joke? Yep, women's rights. Get it? Because the concept of a specific demographic being granted rights that aren't afforded to other demographics is so antithetical to our values, it's actually humorous to consider. Get it? That's what I meant. Don't be misled, but at least with Dr. Ford's story, there was a clear narrative, right? Ramirez confessed to drinking heavily at the alleged event. She's confessed to memory gaps. She's told friends that she wasn't even sure Kavanaugh exposed himself. She wasn't comfortable coming forward until spending, quote, six days of carefully addressing her memories and consulting with her attorney. And no one has even been able to independently confirm that Kavanaugh was at the alleged party. In fact, some of the alleged witnesses directly contradict her story. None of that matters. They're trying to fan the flames of the gender war to gain political power. But as Henry Kissinger said, I'm Henry Kissinger, and boys and girls like to kiss sometimes. Regardless of that, it can't hurt them to spread the rape culture narrative, to the, the oppressive patriarchy narrative, to really just capitalize on that feeling women already have within them that men just don't listen. Because now you've got women coming out making these absurd and obviously false claims, and then the men dismiss them, most rational people dismiss them, and then the media goes, see, I told you that men don't listen to you. And then the feminists go, I knew it. I believe Dr. Ford. No, you don't. No, you don't believe Dr. Ford. You don't even believe Ramirez. What you believe is that you're oppressed and that you've had it rough and you're trying to find some sort of belonging amongst this group because you perceive it to be the path to salvation. You think it's the fault of the patriarchy that you're $100,000 in debt for a degree in women's studies that landed you a job at Bagel Factory. But I guarantee you, if someone with whom you are very close was met with an accusation of these calibers, your little believe all women right out the door, straight out the door. Isn't that funny? Women's studies programs teach women that it's the men that are holding them down so that when they're burdened by the debt and low returns from their useless degree, they, <laughs> they don't think to even question, I don't know, like blame the degree program, no, because they learned it's actually the patriarchy that's holding them down. And it'd be stupid to ignore that. I mean, we paid $100,000 to learn that in the first place, so I wouldn't want to forget that. Also, we're pretty esoteric for bearing such, a, such an obscure take, like uh, it's the men's fault. Yeah, brilliant, ladies. I'm sorry if I'm picking on the women too much. I apologize. Unless you're a feminist, then I don't. But my patience for feminism is running short. The fuse is nearing its end. Because it's like, you know, you're 12, you're 13. You hear that some feminist wants to ban your favorite video game because it's demeaning to women. And you're like, grr, dumb feminazis. And then you get older, your voice gets a bit lower, you travel to different places, you read a bit more, and then not long after, you arrive at the conclusion that most of the problems that this country is currently facing can be traced back to feminism. And so that's why Brett Kavanaugh is so important. This whole thing is so much bigger than Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh at this point is a symbol. Brett Kavanaugh is a motif. He represents the forgotten young man, the forgotten young man of America who just wants to drink beers and, and make fart jokes with the boys only to have his aspirations stepped on by some feminist with a chip on her shoulder. 
And that was previous generations with like calendars and whatnot. Trust me on this one, boys. You're going to see the Brett Kavanaugh motif manifest in the future for young men such as yourself, such as ourselves, rather. The forgotten gamers of America, right? They're going to dig up our Xbox Live game chats. They're going to dig up our DSi flip notes where we made animations of buildings exploding and they're going to use that to red flag our guns away. We're actually just like, we're so screwed. But here's the thing about the outrage mob. They only win if you allow them to win. I get emails, DMs from you guys all the time asking about what to do about this stuff. The best advice I have, firstly, if at all possible, avoid doing things that could warrant these types of accusations being made about you. And I'm not telling you not to go put your PP in girls' hands. Obviously, that's a no-go. I disavow. I shouldn't have to tell you that. What I mean by this is you want to be careful when giving anyone a reason to dislike you and also a reason to want to see you fall. Uh, I know a guy who liked to make a lot of sexist jokes when he was in school. Girls absolutely could not stand him, but all the guys loved him. Uh, this kid was based. But anyways, he ended up getting accused of sexually assaulting this girl in class. And she had no evidence to back up her claims. But guess what ended up happening? All the girls that he had pissed off one by one went down to the office to corroborate her story. And so when he finally had to meet with the administration, and also the police were there too, they literally asked him questions like, have you ever said the only place for women is in the kitchen? And he just started laughing, which didn't help his case. But that's what ended, that's what ended up taking him down. Because all the parents of all these girls that were already pissed at him because of his general record of making jokes put so much pressure on the administration, they had to act. And there really wasn't anything that he could do about it at that point. Believe me, he tried. So that's what I mean by that. I mean, as a general rule, be very careful with your conduct because if people decide they don't like you, an accusation alone is enough to destroy your reputation, as we've seen happen repeatedly in the news, even when they turn out to be false. And the other side of that coin is, if you're not in the wrong, don't apologize. Never, never capitulate to the mob. To quote a high IQ young man, persevere against attacks from the left. When you persevere in the face of what everyone can blatantly see as BS, you inspire others to do the same. When you persevere. Hey guys, if you like this video, what should you do? Well, I'm glad you asked. You can leave it a thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the algorithm. Pretty epic. You could also subscribe if you'd like to see more epic videos, which in itself would be pretty epic. And you can also leave a comment with your thoughts. Sometimes I read through them. They're pretty nice. People are like, hey man, cool. I'm like, thanks, dude. He didn't have to do that. But then other times people are like, Grr, I'm mad at the world. I'm going to take it out on John Doyle. And you know, I understand. I understand. I'll take it. Sorry your marriage is failing. Whatever. Whatever your, your problem may be. Take it out on me. It's fine. It's whatever. It's what I'm here for. It's what I am here for. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.